morning family it's bright and early <sighs> having my morning coffee yeah some of y'all know what that there's my jeep cause I'm a jeep guy my other one But I was telling you guys last night. Come on, Ty. Ty. Working on my yard. And just to give you a snapshot of what my yard looks like. It's pretty big. I'm going to You'll see the backdrop of it in a minute. But I have a huge, huge backyard. Walking on the side. Come on over here. Because I realized something ever since I moved here. What you'll put whatever you put your hands on. Is a direct representation of your actions but it's also what is found inside your mentality your mind so <clears throat> if you can look all the way back as far as you can see that's the other side of my yard it's huge my deck I've got a couple gardens here you can see yeah there's a jeep Got a couple gardens, garden one, garden two, but if you look way over there, there is the other side of my backyard and this infamous stump. Tice, come. Now this, I just built uh, about three weeks ago and said, man, look at all these. You see the grass in here? I deliberately did that because I'm using that as a means to grow. I'm letting this, the grass clippings grow because I'm going to pull them right on out and use that to transplant ball spots in my yard. In my yard. What are you doing? Get it out of your mouth. See, just like a child, always into something. But this is my backyard, and it goes from that side all the way past the shed to that far back point. And I'm going to take you on a tour of this yard. you got to bear with me, family. We've got jets flying over. first moved here there was two six and a half foot shrubs that had grown just were not maintained by the previous renter so I've been slowly but surely trying to kill them off and I found some weed and feed that is actually doing the job so next time I actually shoot a video back here you're gonna see this is gonna be totally totally cleaned out I've actually started being, I sprayed it maybe a week and a half ago and it's doing its thing but I've been putting my time in on this yard this yard originally when I first moved here looked like that ball spots dead bunch of crabgrass and putting a lot of love and time it looks like that now and 
you know, that's the same. I look at that metaphorically as that's how your life should be. What you put your put your time in, the out, the outcome should be the result of whatever your efforts is. Why? Because it's your life. It's your story. So why hold on to toxic or anything that will set back where you are intended to go? Why do it? It's pointless. I'll be cutting this down next week. Apparently this was a, a old tree and the previous tenants here let everything go. As you see the, you see how the, the shrubbage is? Imagine that three feet away because there's a fence line in between that. They didn't care about it. They let it go. And since we've been here since September of uh, last year, slowly but surely I've been trying to do my thing because it's like an unpolished diamond. It's about your life. You can just go with the flow or you can make changes when needed, but have the courage to make that change. There you go. Somebody was like, where's Tyson? There he is. Because I get videos, I get questions all about, do you really have a dog? Yeah, I do. This is my fur kid. This is this is my son. And some of this gray hair that I have is because of him. But someone asked me about, I had made a, I had recited a quote um, that Thomas Jefferson had done. And someone asked me where I got it from. And I told them in the video that when I first moved here, there was a sign, literally. And see, look at that. There's the sign right there. And I knew that was validation for me. Let's see if I can get it right. Okay. Here you go. Should be able to see it. Right away, get it out of your mouth. Nothing can stop a man with the right mental attitude from his goals. Nothing on earth can help the man with the wrong mental attitude. Thomas Jefferson penned that. And it's so true. You cannot get mad at an outcome that you don't put effort in. You cannot expect the outcome to turn out the way you want it to if you don't invest in it. So why would you allow someone to dictate your direction, your happiness, validate your truth? But see, last night, I put that little video out, you know, because see, y'all got to celebrate Fourth of July, I worked. This military don't stop. So I had me some beers. Turn around, wake up, crack a donut. But here's my concern. You'll notice now more and more, society is becoming aggressive. And in the process, becoming more chaotic too. That's why you're seeing more people amped to have a voice. Will you get that out of your mouth? Um, and people think that, well, if we unify together, that'll give us the result we need. But actually, it don't. It don't. You got a lot of people got energy that want to march, then apply. 
but we're not even taking consideration on the actions that we are doing, who are watching it? Especially if you're a parent. Especially if you're in a position of influence. You may be an older brother, older sister. You may be the breadwinner. Or you may be the anchor of your family unit. And it seems like now, more than ever, truth is taking a back seat, a back seat to what is being accepted, condoned. That's why when you notice nowadays, people kind of, <clears throat> I don't know if that was Charlemagne the God that put that out on air, but he said that people are more susceptible on giving shade than love. Why is it the things that we don't need, the things that we should protect, are compromised? It's because we're not having any dialogue. And it's not about calling somebody out. It's all about what's right compared to what's wrong. You know, it's like I always use the analogy about misery being a table with endless seats and all you got to do is sit down there and the price to sit down at this at that table is pain it's time it's ransoming your dreams instead of motivating your steps it's like we are afraid instead of being the best we can be, we're afraid we're going to miss out on something. But what if that something is not in your best interest? But we don't want to talk about that. We don't want to have that conversation with ourselves. We don't want to, we don't want to pull back the scab, so to speak, so that we can take what is toxic out. It's like putting a cotton ball on a gash that requires stitches. The end result is you're going to have a scar. But that scar is a reference point of, the, of that experience. Imagine what would be if that was love, admiration, respect. Better yet? being transparent. What about that? But I'm not going to be winded right now. It's bright and early. You're starting your day. It is approximately a little bit after 9.30. Almost 9.30 here at Eastern Standard Time. And it's, it's in the summer. You are in the midst of the summer. Think of it this way, son. <coughs> Excuse me. No matter whatever that bump was, that challenge you went through, whatever's being revealed right now, look at where you were January 1. <laughs> right there, that should gauge. That should be validation that you are progressing. Because if you wasn't progressing, you would still be right where you were. Think about all the things you have been exposed to. All the people, all the conversations, all the things that you were evident and present to witness. Think about that. Since the beginning of this year. <coughs> Think about that. But you got people still convinced that their life is not progressing as they wished it would be. They think that because maybe financially they're not in a certain bracket that's all for waste. Maybe this is all preparation 
to teach you so that once you get there, you're able to sustain it. You realize how many people are, how I would, I would say springboarded, catapulted, pushed into environments that they're not ready for and they quickly return back to the reality of where they were. And they think that that was a curse. But actually maybe the blessing was you were being shown something to, to validate you have the potential if you commit to it. Who am I talking to? You ever thought about that? The same thing goes with with, with uh, relationships. You meet people all the time. Even if it's by chance. And I, and I say that loosely because of the fact that sometimes God will use a scenario of placing you in a situation just to hear something to give you validation on something that you kept so secret, so intimately in yourself, but because for some other, for some other reason, you didn't want to believe it for what it was. So he gave you an example, maybe by showing you the outcome through some other person's experience. Who am I talking to? So when I hear people say, well, you know, that was fate, girl. That was a fluke. It just so happened. Nothing. Nothing happens just by chance. Nothing. It just depends on if you're willing to receive it and to understand what's being shown to you at that moment. Because what's being shown is actually your insight. Preparation. So, as I mentioned last night, you're in the midst of your summer now, beginning part of your summer. What is the three things that you are going to plant seeds for? Do you know what it is? It might have been something that's been tugging at you for a long time. And you had to get yourself out of a certain environment so you could focus more. It could have been the opposite where the environment changed and found you with yourself. Now granted, I know the biggest hurdle that a lot of people tend to deal with nowadays is And yes, queens, you're not the only one. Guys, guys with just as much as you do, they just handle it different because usually a lot of times they lack the ability to communicate you gotta bear with me I got another jet getting ready to fly over so once it does I'm not gonna say nothing because it's futile not to do it great it changed his okay good it changed his route but that might be your challenge right now. You may be in a relationship that you want to work so badly. You want it to work. You want it to work out because you think that the person that's in your life now exhibits the traits that you can grow with. Or you feel that the influence of your presence can help to find it. Now, let me explain something to you. And the one thing that I've learned these last six years, and I was stubborn. I was. That no matter how badly you want something to work I don't care if it's a job or if it's a intimate relationship
if you're not on the same level, you can't make anybody do anything they don't want to do. And that's something that is a hard reality for a lot of people. They don't want to admit that. You think that, well, you know what, if I re reinvent myself, that I'll put the focus. Okay, it, the jet's flying by, hold on. You can actually see the moon too, it's crazy. Let's see if I can get it for y'all. See the moon? Yeah, that means it's gonna be hot. It's gonna be a hot day. It's all right. Any day above ground is a good day. But you notice it seemed like the last three years, there was so many examples to attack being in a relationship. You heard people talking about separatism. You heard people talking about uh, open relationships. You heard you had people talk about pretty much go for yours, which really was nothing but a position of selfishness anyway. What he do, he do. What I do, I do. But at the end of the day, you're both miserable. So the real question is, why are you there? Why are you there? Why are you marking time or having your precious time depleted? Why are you allowing someone access to your life that won't treasure it? Meanwhile, This beautiful planet still spins, ever changing. Notice we ain't talking about the volcanoes no more. And every now and then they talk about the floods going on everywhere. But conveniently, but also coincidentally, during we got 60, what they said, like 60 fires going on strategically. We're gonna blame that on the weather too, right? Nah. Nah, I don't believe that. It's too coincidental. Yeah, I can understand if it's a accident. You do hear about fires being started by people driving, throwing their cigarettes out, out the window, and they lit in a dry area, and it catches, which is unfortunate. Especially out in the West, it happens pretty much a lot. But let's take that same analogy. What about that fire that's inside you? What that should be ever so smoldering, which is your spirit? What is, what is dampening it? Now, what is it causing? Listen, I spoke on this a couple years ago, uh, two, three years ago. I talked about social evolution in regards to mental health. And people were looking at me like, why are you talking about that? But look at where we are now. All these outbursts, acting up. Is nothing but signs of attention because they believe that their voice is not being heard but then the moment that you really hear yourself does it represent you or does it represent your pain let's talk about that let me tell you something You got a whole lot of life to live. Whole lot of life. 
But ain't nobody gonna live it. They can't. Because it's yours. Always was. Always will be. From the moment you took your first breath. <clears throat> now. Some of y'all are thinking about. Taking the approach of. If I just pack up. And relocate somewhere. Where you going? Tyson. I got He's like. It's like a little five year old. Tice, come here. Oh, you got his little bone. Lay down. People, people got this mindset of well, if I just pack my stuff up and start fresh somewhere else, that's going to be the end all be all. But let me tell you something. You know what comes out of that? You still take the same mentality that you have here, wherever here is, to somewhere new. And you know what happens? You will end up attracting the same environment wherever you go. That's not coincidental. That's spirit. So that means there's something that you've been holding on to in that emotional backpack of yours. that you got to deal with and every year that you go by all it does is damper your spirit becomes more bitter that's why you when you hear people say oh well you know I was in a dark spot I was frozen I was numb you know why they say that because they're afraid they're afraid to look at whatever it is because you know your blessings on the other side of that. Did you know that? Tice. Now listen. Everybody deserves to be respected, to be loved, to feel safe. And live their best life ever. Because it's, guess what? Not to sound morbid. But when you take your last breath. That little three inch hash mark. That's going to be on your headstone. Is going to represent your life. That's one thing man cannot do. No man knoweth the time nor the moment. No man or woman because see you know and, and let's let's stop being pc about it, okay because everything is about oh gender this gender that which is whack that is so whack that's whack so everything is about equality nowadays what about why can't everything be whole hmm I talked to somebody the other day. And I, I saw a commonality. And somebody got mad at me and they was like, girl, why are you beating up on, you sound like you, you have an ax to grind with people that, with women that call themselves feminists. And I don't. I don't know why, but somebody cut me off, so it must be you too. You need to get out of your fed, get out of your feelings. Um, the one example I've always seen, because everything is so politicalized, politicalized nowadays, you know, is the fact that you wouldn't have these demographics if you had dialogue. If you want change, you got to be able to sit down and hear the other person's position. You might learn something from it. And that's one thing that I've always been able to do because I'm always optimistic and always trying to learn something new. You see all the the marching and everything now is 
so racial and radicalized. And I was just like, if we want to, if you want to unify yourself, you want to stand up for something, the number one thing that you need to do is stand up for yourself. You know, I remember seeing, hearing a song by R&B artist Jill Scott. She's got a song, I think, on her first album called The One. And in a short version, she basically says that all it takes is one person to make change. And that's true. One. And then once she figured out that aspect, which takes a lifetime to know who you are. We don't talk about that. Why is that? Hmm? But not to ramble. If you want to stand up for something, why aren't we standing up for our kids? Because our kids are going to be the future leaders and the inheritors of the things that we don't do. You know, your legacy. Who's going to, who's going to carry that torch when it's time to be passed? But you don't hear nobody you know, talking about better education for our kids. Why is that? But here's the funny thing about it. Cause I don't know if it's, I don't know if this is just being done here in Virginia. Virginia now is pushing the, uh, the virtual schools. Um, they call it K-12, K where basically your child attends school through home. So it's, a, it's like homeschooling, but it's similar to like online school for college. Same thing, same, same, same structure. Which has its perks, but it also attacks the ability to interact and build your, ch your child's social skills too. I think some of y'all know that, know what I'm talking about. You know, you got a lot of people that are greatly intelligent, but they have no social skills. None. But you give them a task, and it'll be exactly as it should be. But they can't, they can't apply it, because the, the dynamic of interaction is being pulled away. Now, for some, even though they're not saying anything, I think all that does is spawn a more, <coughs> <coughs> all it does is perpetuate separation amongst communities. I personally think that is because sooner or later your child's going to mature and go off into the world and if that child does not have the proper social skills it will not be able to adapt to the proper situations that they're faced but you don't hear nobody talking about that and the real question is why 2018 you got some people don't even want to admit but we're playing with that racial scale and really is nothing but a throwback of how it was back in the early 1800s with eugenics and perpetuating being inferior because it's based off of fear but we're not talking about that either we're still promoting the things that 
are not going to enhance your child's development, but set them up to be stagnant later on because they're not equipped. And what do we do as people? We align ourselves to the environments that we are familiar to. And that's scary. That's really, really scary, family. I see it. I know you see it. But are you willing to deal with it? You know? I was, uh... <coughs> the last... For the last week or so, um, I've been listening to a lot of vintage hip-hop and... For the last week, I've been bumping uh, Slick Rick's album. So y'all don't know who Slick Rick is. If you know who Dougie Fresh is, they had a hip-hop classic called The Show. And it will be, it will go down as one of the greatest rap songs ever created in the hip hop genre. Well, when Slick Rick did his debut album, he had a lot to say. He, he actually had a lot of social commentary. Get out of those flowers. He had a lot of social commentary embedded in that album. He talked about at that time, HIV was impacting the community as well as how petty crime was starting to not be petty anymore, is becoming a major issue. Everybody knows the song Children's Story. And another song on there, he had on that album called A Teenage Love, which talked about puppy love or when your child is in their teenage years and they're starting to embrace their emotions when it comes to dating. As well as How some, can't think of the name of the other song, but he talked, I mean, there was a song on there called Treat Him Like a Prostitute, which talked about manipulation. And at that time, it was, it was really controversial because people were like, wow, you know, this guy, you know, he's using verbiage that was controversial. But actually, <coughs> compared to today, <coughs> Mm -hmm. that's nothing because everything on that was well written as well as intricately woven in because Slick Rick will go down as one of the greatest storytellers to grab a mic you ever get a chance to listen to his album listen to it he put that album out back in I think 91 but everything that he was talking about on that album is relevant still to this day to this day and what's so funny is for a lot of y'all that grew up in the 90s that are the parents of today think about all the things that were new to you and how you dealt with it. And if you are blessed to be a parent, imagine what your children are feeling right now and why it's so important that you stay in the ear of your child. Now, with that being said, I happened to see a video on YouTube this week. 
and I'm going to put this out there too. If you are a parent that allows your child to play games, say on your cell phone, your your uh, iPad, you know, your pad or whatever, you know, like, you know, you, they've got little games in there. Be very leery on if it has a chat, <clears throat> has a chat option on it. You know how sometimes um, you, you've got, and I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not sure, but I'm gonna find out. But for us, you know how when we like, you may have spades in the spades app on your game on your phone, or you know, and it, and it gives you a little chat box on there. Well, you do know nowadays that you have to be careful with your properties on your phone your iPad because there's been numerous cases where certain words that you may say especially if you've got the assistant option it records what you say it picks up certain words and it cuts the mic on so look at your properties your settings you know, especially with, since everything is going smart tech nowadays, you gotta be careful. You got some people that are doing devious things with that. Now, with that being said, you got some folks, unfortunately, you got pedophiles out there that are preying on these little kids and these games now. And so this lady put a video out last week saying that she had a, uh, she said it was, it was 11.45. Her son, seven years old, she was, she heard his voice and she was about to get in his butt, excuse me, because see what you don't see is, I'm gonna show y'all something. You see this, you see these trees right here? See these trees? See them, right? There you go. See those, see the see these flowers? All right? These were actually shrubs that left to their own demise became and they evolved into a tree. So I got bees and stuff going to the pollen and they're just dropping every, every you know so see like you can see right here not to lose my train of thought but see you look right there see there's a bee right there he's pulling the pollen off and after he gets it he cuts he's gonna cut that 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 petal off and it falls down that's why you see all that after they deplete it they move on well i got my coffee cup here and i gotta be careful because it's falling in my cup but, so, get back to what I was saying. So, she said that she heard her son's voice. And it was like 11.45. And she was like, wait a minute, hold on. He's seven years old. He's supposed to be asleep. Why am I, you know, she thought that he was uh, talking in sleep. So, she went in there to check on him. And he was wide awake. And she was like, what, who are you talking to? And he said, the phone. And she realized that the game, she said it was a shooting game. Um, she said that the game was for younger children. Not, you know, because <clears throat> let's be honest, you got some parents will let their kids download an app and it's actually made for an adult. But this was actually catering for a, it, this was a, you know, a toddler, it was for a young child, it was a young child's game. So the little boy responded, her son responded back to her and said, I'm talking to the phone. 
And apparently that she looked at the phone and you know how the screensaver will come on and it'll be dark. So when she said, what do you mean? She went to grab the phone and she saw that there was somebody's ID logging off. There was a, there was a grown up talking to her son. Now I ain't got to tell you y'all. I ain't got to tell y'all. We live in a sick ass world. Excuse my French. We do. And you just gotta, you gotta watch over your babies because you got some people that want to catch you slipping. And her big concern was she don't know what this person had been saying or had been asking because the little boy's seven. He don't understand discretion. He don't understand. He don't understand that. So she put up, she put that PSA out there. So if you got some little ones out there, first thing first, check your settings on your, on your devices. Um, another thing is, uh, whoever your server is, um, your host, maybe Google, whoever it is, whoever your, uh, Android, go in your settings and make sure that microphone is cut off just as well as your geo lock. Because guess what? You got people that are savvy enough to pull your information up off your off your device for their own devious intent. That's the world we live in. We got a we got a situation here in, in Virginia Beach right now. We got a we got a mom that's been missing for a week. Beautiful lady. Nobody car was over here phone goes to straight voicemail now I understand if a person don't want to be found they ain't they ain't got to be found but we but everybody got a cell phone these days everybody's got a smartwatch these days and let's keep let's keep it 100 your cell phone <clears throat> is nothing but an electronic leash anyway because as long as it's on it can be tracked. Even when you cut it off. Because you got to understand, we live in a world where terrorism is reality. So guess what? Uncle Sam can track anything it wants to track if it needs to come, when it comes down to national security. Please believe that. So when you spend your money on personal security and stuff like that, that's for your peace of mind, but guess what? Anything that is put out there on the net is public. Anything. I know somebody said, well, that's not true, Dry. And, you know, yeah, now everybody's pushing VPNs and encryption. That's the, that's the, that's the, the go-to nowadays. But guess what? That still got to be served. That still goes on somebody's server. And what's happening nowadays? These big companies are having breaches. Your personal information is going out there. And then some third party person has your information calling you up about a bill that you know you wouldn't even pay. Why? Because there's a lot of money out there. Be careful. That's all I'm saying. Be careful. Now, lastly, because it's the beginning of summer, it's going to be hot. Drink some water. Stay hydrated. Make sure your vitamins are on point, y'all. And that goes back to, yeah, so I, got, I got my little scrunchie on. 
uh, about three weeks, I'm gonna go ahead and lock this, lock these curls up. I'm gonna go ahead and dread, start dreading my hair. And I'm gonna tell you what, you need to take the word can't out of your life. Stop doing that. Stop saying, I can't do this. Because that ain't nothing but fear. I know, queens, y'all are insecure because y'all fragile. But society wants you to play the tough person. Even to the point society wants you to act like you you a man. You ain't no man. You ain't. You're, you're, you're fragile like a flower. Unique in your own way. You need to treasure being the best you you can. Now, lastly, somebody asked me about um, how all of a sudden now everybody's doing the um, the body rejuvenations and how now there's been a, 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 a social call where Okay, the big thing was augmentation, you know, breast augmentation, you know, getting the getting the getting the ham hocks swollen, because you you know you think that's what guys want. Mm-hmm. You know what guys want for you to be happy, for you to be you. To stop being like her. And that's why you see so many people now doing public PSAs about, oh, I'm getting reductions. When the reduction should have been inside themselves the whole time. Because you know the one person that you're not going to hear complaining about that is a surgeon. Surgeon know that. Surgeon knew that from... The first consultation, I ain't throwing shade on them. I'm not. Because they're going to make their money with or without your consent. Because there's always going to be an impressionable young girl that thinks, well, if I do a lift, a tuck, a twist, tie that back, I'll be the flavor of the month. Be the flavor of the month. And I'll get the acknowledgement that I've longed for my self-esteem until another young girl comes along. You see that everywhere. Look at music. Look how music has evolved. One girl was the toast of the town. A younger girl comes in doing more. And the seasoned girl is threatened. Why? Be yourself. Be yourself, queen. Now, I don't want to sound like I'm rambling. You want to grow your hair back? You got to get that BS out of your heart. You want your hair to grow? Size up the stress. That's why I grew, look, I grew this as a testament for someone, if I can do it, you can do it. I pulled the scrunchie back. I look like Mad Dog on Good Time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Drink your water. Your hair is alive just as much as you are. And here's the thing, too. The guy, you notice, this is for the king. You notice now they're putting a the brand out there to convince you to invest in it because of boldness. You know that, right? Oh, yeah. Not only we get your hair right, we get your, your sexual prowess back up there, too. It's a two-for-one, right? Nah, it's vitamins. Stop wearing ball caps. You can wear your hats. Don't wear them all the time. Don't wear them, don't wear them all the time because if, you're, if your hair follicle can't breathe, it dies. Now, I know somebody was saying, well, Daryl, look back at all your videos. Mm-hmm. 
But you look at, you, did you notice <clears throat> for periods of times I had certain phases that I allowed my hair to grow? Sometimes I would I cut it all off. Then I would rock a fade for a little bit. But what y'all didn't realize is I did that so that, number one, not to clog up the pores in my hair shaft. And number two, allow my body to heal itself. You realize your body can heal itself, right? Did you know that? And you already have the tools to do it. It's your diet. The more that you, you lean more on uh, healthy choices, the better you feel. Because guess what? If you rely on man, he'll rob you of what you need. So, I got this feeling somebody saying, what about your hair though? What did you do? Let me tell you exactly what I did. Number one, if you want your hair to grow, you got to drink plenty of water daily. Number two, you have to increase the, uh, the proper food for your hair to grow. That means biotin, uh, magnesium. Um, if you don't want to go that route, <clears throat> you can also buy prenatal. Yeah, you know, prenatal pills. Think about it. And you've got those, you got pills that do the, the nails, skin, hair. It's the same thing, but at a lower dosage. If you take it individually, you actually will get a better return. You'll actually get it. And I mean, just look at this year alone. Just look at this year alone. I've got, let me see, February? I think it was about February when I decided that I was gonna dread my hair. Um, but I've got four inches of, of growth. Four. Now, with that being said, you gotta also make sure that your scalp is properly moisturized too. So, you know, oil olive oil um some people use uh castor oil or jamaican castor oil um you just got to make sure that your scalp is healthy because some of y'all might be going through a problem with your scalp because the water when you when you wash your hair is too hard and it causes your hair to dry out that was my biggest issue too i didn't know i was like i didn't understand i'm like hey man I, well, i'm shampooing my hair i shampoo i shampoo my hair uh at least two times a week and you got to be careful with that because you don't want to wash out the nutrients and then i realized that after i you know because you know i stay in the shower but then I noticed that my hair was dry. And I was like, well, wait a minute, why is my hair feel dry? Because the water does that. You gotta think. They put all these chemicals in there so that you can you can drink out of it and for your daily use. Well, that's gonna have a adverse effect on your body. So you gotta you gotta be smart with that. Also, your diet. You want you want your skin to, to do what it needs to do. Start eating more vegetables. I know that for some people say, "Well, Joe, that's too expensive." I ain't got. I don't have the money to go and eat fresh all the time. At least eat a salad twice a week start off at least once a week 
It could be on your Wednesday. But add that to your diet. Lay off the processed foods. Lay off of them. And it's the summertime, so, you know, you can eat all the seafood you want. Tuna. You know, there's always deals out there. But you can never gain weight in regards to vegetables. You can eat all the vegetables you want. You ain't going to gain no weight. But you will get the benefits of the vitamins that, that come from those plants. And then, here's another thing. Because I'm looking at this. I have already broke an hour. I didn't want to do that. Detox. Detox your body. Did you hear me? Detox it. Not only will you drop weight real quick, but it'll also move a lot of the toxins that are inside your body out. You realize how much toxins we carry in our intestinal walls? Do you realize that? Do you realize that? If you can do a cleanse every four months, you straight. A minimum of at least two a year, you're good. And you'll that will remove the sluggishness of your body. You'll also notice your sleeping habits will change too because you'll actually, because listen, ain't nothing wrong than going to sleep, but you're not resting. And maybe the one thing that's keeping you from resting is this. Cut this stuff off. It'll be there. It'll be there. It'll be there. Because I know some of y'all see this. In a town near you, in a city near you, in a state near you. What's going on with us for those who got to commute to work? Why is it the freeways now become the uh, NASCAR tryouts nowadays? Everybody's speeding. You notice that? And what's sad is, you look over to your left or right, and what are they doing? They're on that cell phone. And what they're not telling you, auto accidents in regards to distracted driving is two to one higher than DUIs or impaired driving. It ain't in, listen, it, look. It can wait. It can wait. <clears throat> well, look at y'all. I hope you guys have a great week weekend because you get ready this friday this is friday you're getting ready to roll right into your weekend it's summertime i know some of y'all are saying well Gerald, listen here it is summer on the calendar but you know the work still there it is what it is but make sure you balance it make time for you that's why i mentioned last night when's the last time you did something for yourself when's the last time you went on a walk just walk When's the last time you went to a park or just found a place that you know that you can go to and relax yourself? When's the last time you did that? Because it is about emotional balance, family. It is. Maybe you may find your mental space just doing the things around the house like you like to do, like I told y'all last night. I love getting out here and working on my yard. And the funny beautiful the funny thing about it is when I first moved here, it looked like that. See all those ball spots? When I first moved here. Let me see if I can show it. See how that is? Yeah, that's what this yard looked like. And since I've been here, a lot of time, a lot of love, a lot of effort, and I'm reaping the benefit of it. And those are the things that define who I am. Just a man that places God first in everything he does. You deserve to be happy. 
The real question is when you're going to see it for yourself. Have a great weekend, y'all. Love to hear from you. Peace.